So good morning to all of you and uh, I'm very thankful to the organizer for the invitation to talk about on my work in this conference and uh, thanks for my accommodation. I was told that I got the same room where once uh, Julia Roberts and Mr. Bachchan was stayed. <laughs> yeah, lucky. Thank you. So <laughs> today I'm going to speak on uh, Piriformis spora indica basically. And uh, this fungus was isolated from the third desert of Rajasthan, India by our senior colleague, Professor Ajit Verma. And because of its uh, helping nature, this fungus was termed as plant probiotic. And this was published in Nature Biotechnology in News and Views section in 2005 by S.G. Metal. And I call this fun fungus a magic without one. I have come from a university, which is the symbol of this Jawaharlal University, which uh, states the sharing of the knowledge. And it is the form of a bud also, which was very dear to our former Prime Minister Pandit Nehru, and the, and the kind of a dia to enlighten the world. And my lab is located on the fourth floor of this building, and my university is the house of our national bird peacock, the Neil guy, and the palm caviar. I'm going to tell you why I'm calling this fungus a magic without wand, and I'll give you couple of examples in, in order to support my statement. This fungus, as I said, was discovered in 1998 by Professor Ajit Verma. And it is a plant promoter fungus. It is, acts as a biofertilizer. And it is also a bioregulator, bioherbicide, immunomodulator, phytoremediator, and biocontrol agents against the insects as well as the pathogens. And we have published a paper related to this in microbiology in 2009. And it's test tolerance against the temperature as well as high salt concentration, let's say up to 200 millimolar. And this antioxidant drug enhancer. And this promotes the anti-cancer drugs and phosphate transporter. And we have published this uh, paper related to uh, phosphate transporter in general biological chemistry in 2010. And uh, it's a multifunctional fungus, thereby I call it a plant probiotic as well as a magic without wand. And a paper related to this high salt tolerance was published in Nature Scientific Report in 2013, where made the transgenic plants using a cyclophilin gene from the, this fungus. And this work was done in collaboration with uh, Dr. Narin Tutoja, a group leader in ICGV, New Delhi. And uh, when we discovered this phosphate transporter in 2010, and the later uh, what we did, we collaborated with Professor Stout, who is a National Academy member of USA. And we published this crystal structure of phosphate transporter in nature, where we have shown the binding pockets of this phosphate, how this transported and then binding takes place in the, in the protein. So as I said, why I'm calling this fungus as a you know, plant probiotic? Whether this fungus can help the plant against the biotic stress as well as the abiotic stresses. So what we did in one experiment, we take the plants and inoculate it with the uh, phosphate, uh, sorry, uh, P indica first. And in one set of plant, we infected with the fusarium, which is a root pathogen. In another case, we infected plant first with the piriformis spora indica and later with the, uh, and uh, simultaneously inoculated with the fusarium. And in fourth case, we have not inoculated any fungus, uh, not the pathogen as well as not the piriformis spora indica. And after 15 days, in first set, we have inoculated fusarium, where we have inoculated P indica first. And in the second set, where we have in inoculated the plants with fusarium, a pathogen, and after 15 days, we have inoculated with the uh, 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 piriformis spora indica, and we grown them at for 15 days. What we found out, if you see this particular set, a control plants biomass as compared to the piriformis spora indica. So there was a gradual increase in the biomass of the plants first inoculated with the piriformis spora indica. However, fusarium infected plants were found to be less in biomass as compared to the control as well as the plants inoculated with the piriformis spora indica. And when we have inoculated both together, 
we still see there is a gradual increase in the biomass as compared to the plants infected with the fusarium. In simultaneous as well as the alternate inoculation of the fungus, we found the similar kind of results. That shows that fungus is helping the plant in recovering the biomass, even if it is infected with the uh, fusarium. And these are the morphological appearances of the plants. These are the control plants. These are the plants infected with the fusarium. These are the plants inoculated with the P. indica. And these are the alternate and the simultaneous infections or the inoculation of both the funguses. So where we can see that whether the P. indica or the fusarium is secreting any chemical or antibiotic. What we did, we did antibiotic assay. And we have not found any chemicals or any antibiotics secreted by either of the fungus. That shows that Pindica may be involved in the manipulation or in the alternation of the antioxidant activities of the plants. And we also detected this uh, colonization of the fungus by using the housekeeping genes of both the fungus. If you see this uh, plant infected with the Pindica, we found the colonization till the 35 days all alone and all alone with the uh, fusarium. And when we inoculated P. indica in the plants which were infected first with the fusarium, we found the inoculation, co colonization of the fungus of piriformis sporandica much at 35 days of inoculation. However, in case of uh, fusarium, fusarium was disappeared when we have infected the plants or inoculated the plants with the uh, piriformis sporandica. That shows that P. indica is actually helping the plant in growing better and removing the fusarium from the plants. And in, in, in one of the experiments, what we did, I'm just going to tell you the, uh, what we hypothesize. When plants infected with the fusarium, we found out the catalase activity was much more. Catalase actually degrade the S2O2 and thereby it's, it saves itself in the root of the plants. But when we inoculated the plants with piriformis sporandica, we found the SOD activities was much more higher, uh, dismutase in the plants inoculated with the P. indica. That helps in the increased amount of the S2O2, thereby oxidizing or killing the uh, fusarium in the plant's root. Second uh, aspect why, why I'm calling you uh, uh, this uh, plant uh, as in plant probiotic, there is a problem throughout the world of the phosphorus avail uh, availability. Phosphorus basically present in the three forms in the soil, organic form, inorganic form, and the phytate. Organic form ranges from 20 to 85 percent, which is an unavailable form, and the plant will not be able to utilize it. Reason being, plant does not have a system to excrete out the acid phosphatase, which can solubilize the organic phosphate and which will be taken up by the plants for its development. Inorganic phosphate is available though, but it is very less amount that is between five to 10 micromolar. So that's again a problem for the plants. Phytate is also there. Another form is phosphite actually, which is a reduced form of phosphorus. Plant does not have a system to metabolize it, thereby it can be utilized at the later stage by the plant. But what fungus does? It's not that phosphorus is not available in the soil. It is there. It is in the form of a complex. You know, when one farmer uses a phosphate fertilizer, if it needs half kg of a phosphate fertilizer, for example, it needs to put at least four times more than they need it. Reason being, as soon as they put the phosphate fertilizer, it changes into the complex forms. Thereby, they need to pour four, four folds or four times more phosphate fertilizer. So what fungus does basically, Fungus colonized the plant and it projected out its hyphae from the root and the hyphae goes down in the soil where the roots can't reach. And it excreted out acid phosphatase, thereby solubilizing the organic phosphate available there and it makes available to the plant. So as soon as fungus give phosphate to the plants, plant gives the carbohydrate. And this association is 400 million years old. And as soon as, you know, the land plants arrive on this planet, they have a fungal partner. And who is the cheater here? It's very hard to say. But in my opinion, it's very hard for the fungus to survive without the plants. A plant can still survive because they have a storage capacity of the phosphate. Now, if you see the problem with the phosphate, 
this red area shows the retention actually complex form of the phosphate throughout the world this is the uh, india map you see the generally we get phosphate fertilizer from morocco and by 2050 it will be very difficult to get the phosphate fertilizer in order to improve the crop if we don't if if, if we don't give the crop the phosphate fertilizer the the production of the crop will come down so can we use this fungus as an bio fertilizer what we did actually actually we have discovered the uh, phosphate transporter which helps the fungus in getting the phosphate from the soil and give it to the uh, plant that's involvement in the transportation process the problem with arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi cannot be grown axinically we need to have at least carrot roots to grow them and to use them as a bio fertilizer piriformis porendica it mimics the amf fungi basically and it can colonize both monocots as well as the dicot plants some of the plants like crucifers cannot be colonized by the amf fungi but this fungus can colonize a large number of economically important plants as well as the cereal cro crops and the medicinal plants thereby this fungus is very important and can be grown axinically thereby can be used in the large amount in the feed so as i said this this is the three forms of phosphate in the soil organic precipitated form and the inorganic phosphate and only this this is the one form which is available for the transportation purpose and there are two types of uh, transportation one is the direct where the phosphate transporter of the plant can work and take the phosphate and once they can't take the phosphate they ask the fungus please go and get the phosphate for us so in the second case which we call indirect uptake their transporter works which are associated with the mycorrhiza or which are associated with the fungus if you see this particular slide this is the plant roots when there is no fungus that the plant here and this is the available phosphorus they can go but once it is depleted and where the plant roots can't reach the hyphae can go down and get the phosphate and they solubilize it and give it to the plant and uh, this particular work was done by my first phd student vikas yadav manoj and hemant and we have made the, this uh, library where we have screen out actually that time this uh, uh, genome of pindiga was not out so what we did we made you know universal primer in order to uh, clone the full length gene and uh, we found out there are some conserved reason actually across this uh, uh, fungus group whether it is a uh, glomus uh, which belongs to amf or any other species which have the phosphate transporter you see this uh, red colors which shows the conserved amino acids across the gvpt which is a phosphate transporter of uh, glomus and 44 of saccharomyces cerevisiae and uh, this fungus uh, phosphate transporter has uh, similarity with gvpt of glomus 35% and other species of glomus 35% with saccharomyces cerevisiae phosphate transporter 30% with the tomato plant it is 30% arabidopsis is 30% and with the tomato uh, with the potato it is 30% and they belongs to pst family there are pst1 pst2 and pst3 family pst1 belongs to the transporter belongs to the fungal family basically and uh, we did the uh, you know hydropathy also since the structure of only one phosphate transporter was out which was published in science in 2003 and there is a 6 plus 6 arrangements means transmembrane domain and there is a big loop if you see this uh, between 6 and 7th transmembrane domain and uh, this uh, particular transporter is a high affinity phosphate transporter means whenever there is a low amount of phosphate available in the soil then only it can work so we did uh, you know the uh, biochemical analysis and we found out that uh, uh, before that we found out that as soon as we increase the concentration of 100 micromolar the expression of the gene was off it is not working even if you see at one day fifth day 10 day and 15 days that shows the high affinity nature of uh, this particular transporter and the km was found to be 11 uh, 11 millimolar which shows again proof that it is a high affinity phosphate transporter and we did the uh, modeling since the structure was out of e coli and we found out this is a 6 plus 6 arrangement and later we developed the you know the transformation system for this particular fungus is very hard to genetically manipulate amf fungi since they live inside the plant root 
But as I said, this can be grown exenically, so this transformation system was developed using the electroporation. Now the gene can be manipulated, and first time we have also made RNAi construct for this fungus. And this work was done by uh, Ruby Sharma and uh, Shriya Saha, and we published this article in Nature Protocol Exchange in 2010. This is basically where we have transformed the fungus to show that transformation has taken place using electroporation using GFP. And this is the PCR analysis, and this is the fungus grown at very high concentration of genetic thin. And we did the RNAi, and we selected this particular fragment of 350 base pair. And uh, this was cloned in this particular vector. And we have detected the siRNA, if you see this, uh, ranging between uh, up to 25 uh, nucleotides. And uh, we also selected some of the colonies, basically, which are less expression of this PIPT after the siRNA. And we selected this particular TST2, TS2 colony and TS5. And we did one experiment. What we did, basically, if you take a big plate, you know, one big petri plate, and you put a small a ball in it, and you grow the fungus in a small bowl, and you grow the plant in the big plate outside this particular bowl, and uh, you put radioactivity in the bowl, and uh, you see whether it is transferring or not. We found out since there was no connection, there's a physical barrier, there was no transfer of radioactivity. But when we connect that particular ball with the help of a bridge, we found out that radioactivity transfer and the high fee will also transfer using that particular bridge and ramify into the plants. Look at this particular uh, figure. And the radioactivity was transformed from here, compartment to the plant. And what we found out that in the plant where we did the uh, siRNA and we transformed that particular P indica having this siRNA construct, RNA construct, we found out the transportation of uh, uh, phosphate was 18 fold down as compared to the wild type fungus. So that shows that the PIPT is involved in the transportation. That was the very first report of a phosphate transporter. And we also found out since the hyphae, <coughs> hyphae lives inside the root as well as outside the root, as I said. So the expression should be more outside, actually, when hyphae is in touch with the soil. So we see the expression of PIPT much more in the external hyphae, actually, as compared to the internal hyphae, which are inside the plant root. And uh, <clears throat> you know, how much work is done by the fungus in order to improve the biomass? And how much work or how much work is done by the PIPT alone to help the fungus in getting more phosphate and in order to increase the biomass? So what we found out, when we colonize the fungus with the plant at low concentration of phosphate, there was a 1.8 fold increase in the biomass as compared to the 1.2 when we grow them at the high concentration of the phosphate. And later, we also did the promoter analysis and we found out that the FU4 transcription factor actually uh, regulating the expression of this particular transporter and we have cloned the particular transcription factor and we found out that particular transcription factor is regulating the expression of the PIPT. I'll show you that particular slide. So you, you see this slide, this is the confocal microscopy, and you see the expression of GFP basically when we grow the fungus at the low phosphate concentration. And when we use SI, RNA construct, and we found out that there was no GFP expression. And this is the, you know, the particular schematic representation. When there is a low concentration of phosphate, phosphate comes in and the FU4 sit on the promoter of the uh, particular PIPT gene, and the protein synthesis will take place in it, ask the phosphate transporter to pump the phosphate, which will be taken up by the fungal hyphae and give it to the plant. And uh, I'm going to show you the last slide. This particular transporter was uh, basically <coughs> crystallized
this particular phosphate transporter so far the membrane transporter only eight transporters are, are, are out actually as in crystal structure so we got the help of uh, professor stout from university of california san francisco a national academy member and uh, we solubilized that particular membrane transporter in the ddm basically which is a detergent and express it in gnu but since i'm not a crystallographer i send my student along with this uh, protein and we solve this structure and we clone this particular uh, PIPT protein in this 83 new vector. It's a very special vector, basically designed for the expression of the membrane proteins. And Heman did a lot of work. It, this was his uh, PhD work, and we published this in Nature. And this is a you know phosphate binding pocket in the particular crystal structure as aspartic acid. And there are many amino acid residues involved either in the transportation or in the binding process. Now we are in the uh, process to know which are the important residues in this particular phosphate transporter by which we can inhibit them and when, you know, make them for the cancer cells. For example, cancer cells will not be able to grow if we are not going to give the phosphate to them. And these are our publications in Nature, and Nature Protocol Exchange, Plant Signaling Behavior, JBC, Microbiology, and recently we got uh, two scientific reports, and one paper is under a review in uh, PNAS of USA. A lot of uh, acknowledgement, Dr. Narin Toteja from ICGB, Dr. Dua from SES, Professor Sapuri, our former Vice Chancellor, Saxena, uh, for homology modeling, Dr. Maria Harrison from Cornell University, and uh, Dr. Lagwe from Germany, Dr. Bunia from uh, Japan, Professor Casey Upadhan, PC Rath from GNU, Ralph Olmuller is from Germany, who's our collaborator, and we have published almost more than 10 papers together on this fungus, and Paula Bonfante, I call her the queen of this arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, and she's from Italy, Turin, and Ajit Vama, sir, who has discovered this particular fungus, capacity building fund from GNU, DBT, and CSIR, and this was the slide when uh, uh, Vikas actually cloned this particular gene and published in JBC, and this was when we published uh, this paper in Nature in 2013, and thanks to my lovely twin daughters who always allow me to work. Thank you very much.